Hi, I'm Dr. David Targan, and welcome to BioDigest. With global population expected to reach 9 billion by 2050, it's estimated that world food production will need to double on the existing farmland we use today. John Riesteck produces corn and soybeans at his mid-sized family farm in Illinois and has experienced the profound and positive changes that biotechnology has brought to his business. A lot of people have a, a great fondness for, for, for farming and for farmers. They may not have ever grown up on a farm or been to a farm, but it's kind of a romanticized uh, image. And part of that is true. But of course, also today, it is a very big business. And we're making decisions and we're, we're using technologies. So it's a balance between the mythology and the reality of agriculture. Well, it's a pretty typical farm for Central Illinois. I raise corn and soybeans, and I farm about 1,800 acres. This is the corn planter, very similar to the first corn planter that I ever used. It opens up a furrow, it drops the seed in, and it closes the furrow back up. And a good day, you might be able to plant 50 acres in a day. This tractor is, is very similar. In fact, it's the same model of tractor that I first started farming with when I helped my dad. It was the best we had at the time, but things are a lot different today than, than they were uh, uh, 40 years ago. Well, this is my newest tractor that I just purchased this spring. So we can work a lot of acres, do a lot of tillage. Uh, it's a very, very productive tool. Uh, solves a lot of problems. But the problems that we still have today, just like we did back in the past, are things like weeds and insects. The most important piece of equipment on the farm uh, is my planter. You know, there's the old, the old biblical saying, you reap what you sow, and, and, and sowing the crop, planting the crop, is the most important thing that we do. One of the biggest pests that we have is, is a pest called the rootworm. And it's a small worm that actually eats the roots off the corn plant. I couldn't grow corn on my farm if I didn't have a way of controlling, of managing those rootworms. So for many, many years, what we used was an insecticide, um, very similar to this. Fairly safe, but it is the most dangerous product that I use on my farm for myself and for, for people around. And so farmers don't like to use insecticide. But if you, if you look at my new planter that I have today, one of the things that you'll notice is, is there's not insecticide on a lot of these row units. We don't have the need to put insecticide in all the planter because today we can rely on another technology and it's a technology that's right into the seed plants. This corn special, what's been bred into this is an is a ability for the plant to produce a protein. That protein, when it's ingested by the, the rootworms, for example, it irritates their stomach, their gut. Um, they don't like that. Sometimes it'll kill them, but sometimes they just quit feeding. By using that and having that protein put into the plants, it means we don't have to use an insecticide to control those rootworms. Very ingenious. And they're looking at all sorts of different kinds of protection and benefits that they can, they can add to the seed itself because it's a very easy and a safe way to incorporate that kind of protection. Another popular and effective biotech product is herbicide tolerant soybeans. These are soybean seeds. These are different than what I would have planted a generation ago because they're, they're genetically modified. So that it can tolerate uh, a herbicide that uh, 20 years ago would have killed these soybeans. When you have a tool like that, uh, it makes farming much more efficient and makes my life a lot easier. When we're raising row crops, we have competition with weeds and uh, the weeds will compete for nutrients and sunlight and water. So. Uh, this application of uh, glyphosate herbicide uh, will take out the competitive weeds and then just leave the plants that we need out in the field. Our goal here is to remove the weeds but yet to not damage your crop and to be as environmentally sensitive as we can. When I was a boy growing up, the way we controlled weeds was with a lot of tillage. In other words, we, we would take implements out and we would tear the soil up and we would tear the weeds up. And we would do that continuously throughout the year. Because of technologies like this, we can use less tillage, which means there's less soil loss, which is a very, very important environmental benefit of these seeds. This is the most productive part of the farm. This is the topsoil, and it's six to eight inches thick. When you get below the six to eight inches, you start to get into soils that are not near as productive. Uh, and so it's very important that you, 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 you save this soil because it takes thousands and thousands of years to recreate it. It can be lost in a minute, but it takes thousands of years to recreate. So one of the things that we're able to do with these new technologies is we leave a lot more of the previous year's cover, the crop, the residue. If we use tillage like we did when I was first growing up, 
we would have to continually till the soil to kill the weeds. So we would have more exposed soil that would be more likely to erode. But today, we used a herbicide that controlled the weeds that were growing. We planted directly into the last year's corn crop. We will spray it one more time for weeds and then we'll harvest it. Huge savings in fuel, but a huge saving in soil. This is sustainability. Uh, we can do this for generations. One of the things that people don't always realize in agriculture is we do have an environmental impact. I mean, we have erosion, we lose soil, we use fuel, we, we do a lot of things, and we try to minimize that. But if you think of this thing through, one of the best ways to minimize impact is by increasing yields. Because if I can take in this field another 35 or 40 bushels of corn off of a field by selecting a better hybrid or variety, because perhaps it's genetically modified, that means the amount of fuel that I use per unit decreases, or the amount of soil that's been lost decreases. So the best thing for agriculture is to, is to produce a lot on maybe fewer acres. And, uh, and, and that can happen if you have the right kinds of technology. Now, food is a fundamental human need. And there is a sense of satisfaction that we're producing things that people need. I, I sometimes joke with my wife, who's a school teacher, that we, we're both lucky because we get a fresh start every year. She gets new students, I have a new crop. And we get to, uh, to, to try to uh, start over again and plan and try to make things better the next year with, with the experiences we've had in the past. In addition to increasing yields through controlling weeds and insects, Using the tools of biotechnology, scientists are developing plants that contend with other natural stresses, such as drought, heat, cold, and soils too acidic or salty to support growth. For BioDigest, I'm Dr. David Targan.